What's up? This is Gilbert Arenas rocking with the Three Point Conversion Radio. Y'all tune in. Holla at your boy. Get yourself your own energy, but that just seemed like even a weirder experience than what I'm even thinking. Of. How would you describe what I was playing in that playing that kind of environment? It's not easy, I can tell you that. Uh, you just lean on your brothers, you just lean on your teammates, and try to get the job done. But we tried to find some energy and juice. Actually, we had a slow first first quarter. We felt like, and we just tried to find find some energy and juice. But it was tough. Like, Second quarter, you had 13 in the second. What was working for you in that quarter? The one that just been aggressive. I, coach had moved me to the three, so I just felt like I should be aggressive, a little more aggressive than normal and trying to make plays. I think um, Chris and Book was on the bench at the time. I just wanted to be aggressive and try to make some plays. That's all I was thinking about. But in terms of just the game, Monty was describing it cold, open court. You know, in the bubble, they had the, the black background, and it was a more cozier feel. Uh, how odd was it, though, tonight, though, for both of you guys to play in that kind of environment? I asked Jay earlier, so I asked you that, Chris. Uh, it was cool. I mean, I think everybody's just trying to adjust. I mean, I'm just grateful we actually still get to play the games. You know what I mean? We got out there. It was odd right, because we've been playing all these games with fans, and then no fans. But luckily, we played like that last year. We played in the bubble. And for us, we just kept talking about bringing your own energy, you know? So. Uh, 21, 22 offensive rebounds they had. At what point were y'all like, what the hell's going on here? We got to figure out a way. Yeah, you know, uh, that's one of them games you got to put your hard hat on. They was crashing. You know, some of them were self-inflicted, but some of them we were fighting. He was trying, you know, and uh, <clears throat> to give up that many offensive rebounds and still win the game, we'll take it. It is what it is. We'll try to clean it up for Indiana. I was going to ask you, Jay, as well, not only the 20 offensive rebounds, but 20 some odd turnovers. I mean, how, how did the team overcome those two numbers? Because you got those two numbers. We got stops when we needed to. I felt like, especially when those guys were getting offensive rebound after offensive rebound, we got stops, especially a big one. I remember um, they're late. We just got it. We just found stops, especially when we needed it. Um, I just think that that's what it came down to winning on the defensive end, letting the offense take care of itself, but honing down on the defensive stop. When we needed to. It uh, looks like you had issues with the blow up, blow up doll. Uh, no, I wouldn't have blow up when it was the other one, the live one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We hashed it out. We, we on the uh, Also, when the blow up thing was up, no? No, it was, he was alive. <laughs> the real mascot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We cool now, though. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, speaking of offensive boards, you got a huge one to track it down in Aiton. Followed up and got kept the possession. Like, how huge was that possession? Because you guys were down one and you hit the shot. Put you guys up one. I mean, it was a fight all night. I mean, we were trying to keep them off the offense glass and, you know, we'll just make it more physical than the game was. You know, I think they beat us up a little bit, but down the stretch, you know, we picked it up and did what we had to do. Chris, uh, Coach was talking about defensively how you guys. To give those kind of numbers and hold them to that limited point, talk about the defense. Uh, it seemed like you had a couple of skills where you just said, give me the ball. <laughs> uh, Especially that one in the um, come out of halftime. It got, yeah. us, it got us going a little bit. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Is that something that you felt like needs to be done at that point? Man, I think we just all was just down there trying to fight like every time. You know what I mean? So when the ball is there, they got so many loose balls tonight and they converted off of it, especially in the first half. He had guarded Pascal really good. Then they missed, tipped it back, lay up. Uh, OG, I think, hit a three after plays like that. So we just wanted to try to be aggressive in the second half. Everyone wanted to ask about DeAndre. He only had one rebound in the first half and then had, I think, eight or nine in the second. What maybe what flipped for him or, or to get him going on, on that end? Well, I mean, as a team, we just communicate. You know, we, we let him know at halftime. And that was said, you have one rebound. And, you know, he took it like a man, and he went out there, and he was more physical. So, you know, that's what we pride ourselves on as a team is, you know, not taking stuff too personal. And, you know, we, we know when we're not giving our all. That's what we have teammates for to come in and, and, and let us know. So, you know, it's the same way, vice versa. You can come to me and say the same thing. One thing I had up to follow was the challenge group. I'm just trying to figure it out because it just seems 
different from even last year when they installed it. I mean, how are you guys doing it now? Coach said he's still great on it. On the challenge, man? Yeah, yeah, just on challenge, on the challenge rule, period. What you mean? I don't know. Well, it seemed like, well, you had the one, it was a challenge on Devin's shot, and they called an offensive foul. And it's like other players have been kicked go the other way. So, oh, no, man, Jimmy started doing it. He's trying to get us fine. He's trying to get us fine. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get at how you guys are seeing well, it. The it's rules. times where you do kick your leg out, stuff like that. But on books, that, that that was a natural shot. Like, I don't know how you shoot a fadeaway without your leg coming forward. You know what I mean? So, they'll come back next time and be like, oh, it don't matter. It's cool. <laughs> you make this pre-set up here. Y'all going to do this again? Men in black. <laughs> <laughs> we'll finish with two questions on Zoom. Well, no, we'll send them Brendan, please. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you <lay off. laughs> you lame, yeah. Just yeah. Hey, hey, book. Uh, just to get clarification on the free throws at the end, are you just not used to having any mascots or, or fans in that situation? Is that what you objecting to? What do you say? One more time, Kevin. With the free throws, in terms of what you were objecting to, just in the fanless environment, you're just not used to having anyone back there, right? Yeah. I mean, I was trying to get him out the way. <laughs> so it worked. I'd rather be shooting with him out without him down there. We play a shooting game all the time, every day. These two do the same thing, and, and I complain then, so <laughs> that's just me. Last one will be Brendan, please. Dwayne got the footage from yesterday. <laughs> hey, uh, Chris, just curious. Uh, it might not be the, the main focus for you right now, but heading toward another all-star possibility this season, I'm just curious what an achievement like that means to you at this point in your career. Is it something you're thinking about at all after making it so many times? Is that still a goal for you? How do you look at that? Uh, I ain't really thought about it too much. Tell you the only goal right now is I want to get our coaching staff there. Real talk, that's that's the only goal is to get our coaching staff there. I think they deserve it. The way they done built this program here and us being right there on the cusp of it, we got to do our part and get them there. Yes.